My name is Alison Gibbon and I'll be talking about outcomes of Indigenous twin and singleton pregnancies in Australia. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land I'm recording on today, the Awabakal people, and pay respect to their elders as well as to any other First Nations people watching this presentation. This work is unpublished, um, but we are close to submitting manuscript, so there's a no social media sign on some of the slides. Throughout this presentation, I'll use the term Aboriginal to refer to both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians. Twin and singleton pregnancies and births often differ greatly. Complications of pregnancy are more common among twin pregnancies, births are higher risk, and the outcomes for infants are poorer. As a result, guidelines recommend heightened monitoring of twin pregnancies and access to specialist care during the birth. Why study Aboriginal twins? It's possible these pregnancies and births may be particularly high risk. Firstly, research shows Aboriginal singletons have increased adverse outcomes compared to non-Aboriginal singletons. Secondly, Aboriginal people can face barriers to accessing appropriate services, and this may also apply to the specialist care needed for twins. Currently, very little is known about Aboriginal twin pregnancies, and a better understanding may lead to an improved health system response during pregnancy and during birth. So the aims of this work are to describe and compare the pregnancies, births and perinatal outcomes for all Aboriginal singletons and twins that were born in Western Australia from 2000 to 2013 and born in New South Wales 2002 to 2008. A second aim was to compare Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal twin births in New South Wales. 45% of all Aboriginal Australians live in either Western Australia or New South Wales. New South Wales is Australia's most populous state, so even though the time periods were different, the number of Aboriginal births in the two states was similar, with 880 twins born in Western Australia and 794 in New South Wales. The non-Aboriginal twin population in New South Wales was over 18,000. The red circles mark the cities which contain neonatal intensive care units, as you can see, in both states, the distances from those NICUs to the most remote parts of the state are huge. The data collections that were linked were birth records, which contain demographic details of the infant and mother, uh, antenatal care, maternal health, pregnancy complications, labour and birth, and perinatal outcomes. Also linked were birth registrations with demographic details of the infant and mother, and death registrations with the fact of death and date of death. Hospital separations had diagnoses and procedures during the period of the pregnancy and the birth, but we didn't have hospital separations for all of the New South Wales mothers and infants. So for pregnancy complications, I'll only discuss results from Western Australia. Also due to time limitations, I'll just present some selected, some selected results. So looking at maternal age, with age increasing from left to right and each bar representing the percent um, of mothers in that age group. The light green bars are for mothers of singletons and the darker green bars are for the mothers of twins. This top row has um, Western Australian Aboriginal um, births. The middle row has New South Wales Aboriginal births and the bottom has New South Wales non-Aboriginal births. So we can see that for each group, the mothers of twins were more likely to be older. Um, and you can also see that in New South Wales, the non-Aboriginal mothers were much more likely to be aged 30 or more. Mothers of Aboriginal twins were more likely to already have children, but this was not the case for non-Aboriginal mothers. As expected, uh, pregnancy complications were more common among twin pregnancies. So, for example, preeclampsia, eclampsia, and gestational hypertension um, affected twice the proportion of pregnancies, of twin pregnancies, than singleton pregnancies. However, gestational diabetes um, was equally common in singleton and twin pregnancies. Um, and Antipartum hemorrhage um, occurred twice as often in twin pregnancies and singleton pregnancies, and preterm pre labor rupture of membranes four times um, more common in twin pregnancies than singleton. 
In both states, mothers of Aboriginal twins were more likely to attend antenatal care in the first trimester than mothers of singletons, with an extra 4% of mothers. The vast majority of twin births took place in principal referral hospitals or large public hospitals. Um, in Western Australia, that was 81% of Aboriginal twin births and in New South Wales, 90% um, of Aboriginal twin births were in these large public hospitals. Only 72% of non-Aboriginal births in New South Wales were in these hospitals and that was largely because a quarter of those births, a quarter of non-Aboriginal uh, twin births in New South Wales took place in private hospitals, um, which compares with 5% um, of Aboriginal twin births in Western Australia and 4% of Aboriginal twin births in New South Wales. Many mothers gave birth far from home. 31% of mothers of Western Australian Aboriginal twins lived at least three hours by car from the hospital. Even in geographically smaller and more populous New South Wales, 8% of mothers of Aboriginal twins were at least three hours from home. High proportion of twin births were vaginal, um, almost half for Aboriginal births in Western Australia, 40% um, in New South Wales and 37% for non-Aboriginal births in New South Wales. Many infants were born very small and born early. 5.6% of Aboriginal twins in Western Australia were stillborn or died within 28 days of birth. 3.8% of Aboriginal twins in New South Wales died perinatally and 3.4% of non-Aboriginal twins in New South Wales. Around two thirds of Aboriginal twins in Western Australia were born at 36 weeks gestational or less compared to 58% in New South Wales and 49% of non-Aboriginal twins in New South Wales. Looking at the birth weight of singletons at the top of the graph um, and the birth weight of twins at the bottom of the graph, we can see that for each of the three populations of Western Australian Aboriginal, New South Wales Aboriginal and New South Wales non-Aboriginal, the median birth weight of twins was roughly 900 grams less than the median birth weight of singletons. Um, we can also see that um, the twins, Aboriginal twins in WA weighed less than Aboriginal twins in New South Wales and both weighed less than non-Aboriginal twins in New South Wales. Um, following the birth, mothers of twins spent roughly twice as long in hospital. So we found that mothers of Aboriginal twins were older than mothers of singletons, but a lot younger than non-Aboriginal mothers. There were high rates of gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, and other complications of pregnancy. Yet mothers lived far from specialist medical services. The vast majority of twins were born in large hospitals and discharged home from hospital, but there was a higher perinatal death rate in Western Australia. And many Aboriginal twins were born early with a median gestational age of 36 weeks. So looking at the totality of the journey from pregnancy to discharge home from hospital, a twin pregnancy and birth can be challenging, both physically and practically. Complications during pregnancy are common and complications and interventions during the birth are also common. Many mothers must travel for antenatal care and for the birth and have a long stay in hospital away from home and social supports. Mothers are also more likely to have older children to care for during this period. As a result of this, mothers of twins may benefit from additional support. More research is also required to understand the implications of lower gestational age and birth weight of Aboriginal twins. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge everyone involved in these two data linkages, including the mothers and babies in the data sets. And if you have any questions or comments, please get in touch using the conference's meeting hub or by email. Thanks for watching.